Hello, my name is Neil Davidson and I'm the founder of Raw Amber Studios. Welcome to another online drawing session. This session mimics the structure of a regular life drawing class. We'll show you one or more photographs on the screen and it's your job to draw what you see. We'll have an artist joining us, giving hints and tips. You can either follow their advice or do your own thing. It's entirely up to you. You can watch this video again once it's finished and you can also download the reference photographs so you can carry on your work after the session. Lots of people watch these sessions twice. The first time round they just watch and then the second time round they watch and draw along. I hope you enjoy the session. Right, let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome to this latest Raw Umber portrait drawing tutorial. In this video I will be drawing a single one hour pose and I will be focusing on first building up the portrait and in the latter half of the video I will just be focusing on how to finish a portrait. In this video I will be working on white bristol paper with willow charcoal as well as compressed charcoal. I like to use a putty rubber to erase and finally I like to use a set of blending tools. This can be brushes or alternatively this can be a stump or even your finger. You can find all my materials in the materials box below the video but of course feel free to use whatever you prefer to use. And as a last thing before I start drawing, when I start making lines I like to use my whole arm. Note that my wrist is not really moving when I'm making marks and this is because it's much easier to draw confident lines if you're using your elbow to steer rather than your wrist. And with that being said, before I start to draw, I'm going to start toning the paper first using willow charcoal. And for this, I'm just using the side of an old piece of willow charcoal. I'm just rubbing this onto the paper. And the goal here is to create a nice, even, mid-tone grey. To even it out, I like to use a little tissue or anything else, a cloth or a rag, to rub this into the paper, which will even out the tones a bit more, and if I need it I can do another layer of charcoal on top. Essentially what I'm trying to get here is a system of three tones or values. The first tone being the darks that I will be putting down using my willow charcoal, and the mid-tone being the grey of the paper. And for the light, I can just erase into that mid-tone in order to put in my highlights. So now I have this value system of three tones. I'm going to start of course with the darks using my charcoal. And for the first one third or so of the video I will be mainly focusing on constructing the skull as well as the features and then I will be doing some finish on top of that. Now the first thing I always do is find the chin and the top of the head and this can be anywhere on the page. Another really useful thing to find is the center line and this is the line that goes through the middle of the forehead, through the middle of the nose to the middle of the chin. 
Now I will be working in comparative measurements here and what this means is that I'm comparing different areas to other areas in the drawing. For instance, if I want to find the midpoint, I can simply use my charcoal to measure, marking the halfway point with my thumb and seeing how many times the charcoal can fit into the two lines that I've just made. And I can do the same if I want to find, for instance, quarters. I can just divide that halfway point up in yet another two halves. And it's always useful to see if there's anything useful on these halfway or quarter marks. In this case, I can see the first mark marking the hairline, the second will be the base of the brows, and the third bottom mark will be the bottom of the nose. Now you can use this technique to find vertical measurements like I just did, but you can also use it to compare verticals versus horizontals. For instance, the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin is roughly equal to the center line, so the middle of the face, to the side of the cheekbone. So as you can see, using comparative measurements is quite flexible and helps with measuring the main areas of the face. Now at this point I wouldn't be measuring small details yet, I'm just roughly trying to shape the skull and the features. And the shape of the head is very important with this. In her case I can see the head. The outline of the head is a bit wider near the top and more narrow towards the chin. So I'm just going to try and sketch this outline out so I've got a, a rough idea of where everything should sit. I want to switch tactics here. We've been working a lot in line and measuring and now I want to switch to working with masses. And what this means is, instead of using lines to draw everything out, I'm going to use dark and light shapes. So for instance, looking at the side of the head, I can see there's quite a lot of hair there. So I'm just going to measure this using comparative measurements, and then place a big block of dark where the hair should be. I like to use parallel lines when drawing these big shapes, just because it gives a sense of atmosphere to the drawing, rather than lots of squiggly lines, which make the viewer think there's something important happening. So I like to use parallel lines if I'm indicating general darks. And I'm really trying to think in terms of blocks of dark and light here, really simplifying it. So for instance, I'm ignoring the ear here and just looking at the big blocks of light and shade. Oh, 
underneath the chin I can see not a block but a big triangle going from the bottom of the jaw to the side of the neck. And if I want to make it even more simple, I can see that generally the right hand side of the face is shaded. So I can just simplify this by drawing a big block of shade on that side. And on top of this, I can start adding triangles. For instance, the triangle of the nose. And I'm really not looking at the nose itself here. I'm just thinking, is this a big triangle, a long triangle? How does this triangle look like? And this just makes it so much easier to draw a nose, which can be very complicated. Same thing with the eye, just looking at that big triangle of darkness, trying to simplify it all. For the other eye sockets, I like to squint and try to ignore the eyelids and just look at the general eye socket. you can see how quickly a face is starting to form just by looking at these triangle and square shapes. Finally for the mouth I like to drop a line down from the middle of the eye to find the corner of the mouth and I like to divide the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin into three equal parts. And when I put a little shadow shape on top there, very quickly, our brain just fills in that it's lips, but really what it is is just two little square shapes of dark masses. And this principle is called Gestalt. And what this means is a German word is something like shadow or shape. And the Gestalt principle is that if we see a bunch of shapes, our brain automatically fills in the gaps. A bit like looking at pictures in clouds or something like that. So we can use this when drawing to create a rough idea of where everything needs to be placed without having to put all the details in. So now I'm just going to spend the last few minutes just adjusting these shapes that I've made. And while I'm doing this, if you have any questions at all, feel free to let us know in the comments if you're watching this live.
at this point. I'm going to start making my shapes a little bit more complicated, still working mainly with these shapes and these big masses, but I'm going to be a little bit more precise about it. For instance, in the eye here, I can add a little light shape for the top lid and try to make the eye shape a little bit more complicated. This is also where my compressed charcoal will start coming in. The compressed charcoal is a little bit harder to erase, a little bit darker than the willow. And this is where I come back to line and I start to outline my shapes in a more precise manner. And once I've got this, I can start building up the tone by using a blending tool and gently blending this in with the surrounding skin. And what this does is make the shadow shapes feel a little bit softer, a little bit less graphic, but also it doesn't let you lose that precision because the compressed charcoal still stays on the paper. So same thing with the nose here, I can just outline the main forms of the nose, which are the tip of the nose, the bridge of the nose, and finally the wings of the nose. Now drawing these underlying shapes is not necessary per se, I just like to sketch them out because it helps me find where I'm supposed to be drawing the eyeball or the nose for instance. And just like I did for the eye, I can now start slowly merging this shadow into the skin using my blending tool. You can see that this blending adds a layer of realism to the drawing. And because the compressed is a little bit more sturdy and doesn't get moved around as much, you can really start sketching on top of these shapes using that compressed charcoal without worrying that the blending will remove what you've just did. For instance, for the eyeball, what I like to do is imagine the iris in the eyeball, forgetting about both lids, 
and then just gently remove the area that's covered by the top lid. And I'm doing this all in a compressed charcoal, really trying to draw out the eyes. And then once I'm fairly happy with it, I like to use my blending tool to blend it all together and soften it a little bit. So the same thing for the other eye, looking for the arch of the brow, the roundness of the eyeball, and then putting the lids and the iris on top. I like to make sure that both my irises are roughly in the same place relative to the eyeball, which helps with making the eyes feel like they're going in the same direction. And again, once I'm relatively happy with this, I can use the blending tool to bring it all together. And if I want, I can even use the rubber to already start bringing out some of the highlights. So I'm now going around my portrait, outlining my shadow shapes and the main details of the features and then again blending them in if I feel like they're a bit too graphic. And like I said earlier, feel free to do this a few times. For instance, I've already done a nose earlier and then blend in together and now I can build up those lines again. Now I've spoken about the main forms of the nose and the main forms of the eyes. And for the lips, there are three main planes of forms to consider. You've got the philtrum going to the middle of the mouth, from the middle of the nose. And you can think of the mouth as a sort of bridge shape. 
there's a more or less flat middle bit that then curves downwards to the corners of the mouth. And the corner itself can be a very particular shape that's important to the likeness. It's also generally a bit softer, so I always make sure to really blend this in. For the chin, you can imagine a round shape that attaches at the bottom of the bottom lip. And this may sound a bit abstract, but if you can imagine feeling these round shapes, you can imagine how the shadow lays on top of it and makes drawing a lot easier. Okay, so now I'm going to spend a few more moments adjusting these shadow shapes and adjusting and building up these stones. And of course, while I'm doing this, if you have any questions at all, feel free to ask in the comments if you're watching this live. At this point I'm not really using the rubber yet, so if I have to make corrections, for instance I'm going to put the ear in next, then instead of using rubber, which will bring a highlight into my paper, instead I like to use my finger or another blending tool to gently erase those shadow shapes away. The important thing to remember with the ear is that it should sit somewhere between the top of the brow and the bottom of the nose. Now for those of you with a subscription, I do have an ear video. So feel free to check that out, but for now, the ear is mostly covered by hair. And this is also where we can start getting a bit more creative with the lines I'm making. So I'm going to treat the hair exactly the same as I did the other shadow shapes. But because it's hair and quite malleable and changeable, I can really be quite loose here. And you may have noticed that I haven't actually drawn in that look of the hair that's sitting in front of her forehead and in front of her eye. And the reason for this is that it's much easier for me to draw in the eye first and then put the hair on top. And again, because this is hair, you can be really quite sketchy with this and have some fun with the curvature of the hair. And again, just like I did before, I'm using parallel lines for the big shapes and I'm using my compressed charcoal for the expressive lines. Thank you. 
And the way you draw your lines and how many lines you like to draw is already part of the finish of the drawing. Some people like to be fairly tight and draw every single hair and other people like to be very abstract with the hair. For me personally, I like to put more detail where I want the focus of the picture to be and like to keep everything that's not the focus a bit more loose. So in this case, I'm moving now away from the hair. I'm going to start focusing on the features because they are, in my opinion, the most important area of the portrait. And the same principles apply for the finish, they're just a bit more of a smaller scale. So I'm going to start adding smaller lines around the features, trying to be more precise around those areas, but I'm still blending them in occasionally. At this point, we can also start adding lights. And the thing about lights is that they really catch someone's attention. So I try not to make them too harsh or everywhere. For instance, I'm not putting them into the hair, even though there are highlights there. And this is also to do with that focus of the portrait. For instance, I do want a highlight in the top lid and for this I look at the brightest point and I go in there with my rubber and erase a little bit and you can see this really pulls the focus towards the eye.
Now it's a good idea when finishing to focus on the edges of these light and dark shapes. And a very good rule of thumb is if you've got a harsh edge somewhere, you also need a soft edge next to it. So in this case, I've got a fairly crisp edge at the bottom of the top lid and so I'm going to try and get more of a gradient in other areas of the eye. These soft versus hard edges is what happens in real life as well. Our skin is not always harsh or very, very soft. It alternates. And the more we can alternate this in the drawing, the more finished the drawing will look. And like I said earlier, this is also a place where you can start making creative decisions. Just because it's on the photograph doesn't mean you have to draw it in. In fact, if you have details everywhere, it makes the picture feel a little bit much of a muchness. And a really great example of this, in my opinion, is the Tudors versus Rembrandt. For instance, have a look at this Tudor portrait first. It's a beautiful portrait, but if you compare it to this very similar portrait by Rembrandt, you can see that the Rembrandt portrait has a lot more focus to it, your eye gets drawn to the face immediately. And if you notice that on the Rembrandt portrait, the hands are barely painted. And this actually helps direct the focus towards the face and makes it a stronger portrait. So a lot of drawing is also knowing what not to put in and what actually to leave out in order to make your portrait stronger.
And before, I was speaking about the different forms of a portrait, the roundness of the chin, for instance. But of course, every element and feature has its own form. If you'd be sculpting it, it wouldn't be a flat sculpture. Now, of course, we're not sculpting here, but we can suggest form in the same way in order to make our portrait look a bit more realistic. And a good rule of thumb is that anything that goes round will have a softer gradation and everything that is indented or sharp will have a nice sharp and crisp line or edge. A good example of this is the lips. The top lip turns round into the skin below the nose. This means that this area needs a soft gradation in order to make it feel like it goes round. The bottom of the top lip arches quite sharply into the middle of the mouth and therefore this is not a round area and we can use a nice crisp line here. In this case I'm using a rubber for that. Same thing for the chin. The chin is generally going round, so I can use a gradation to indicate that. And the place where it comes out first, near the bottom of the bottom lip, can have a nice crisp highlight. And these small changes make a big difference in terms of finish. Having these small highlights and crisp lines really pull the eye in towards the features of the portrait. And I can start to find these round lines and highlights for every element of the drawing. For instance, the nose as well as the cheekbone. So I'm just going to spend a few minutes here just finding these highlights and these forms. And if you have any questions at all, again feel free to ask me in the comments 
if you're watching this live. So we're getting near the end of the pose and I've spent a fair amount of time finishing and rendering the features. And the tendency may be to also spend this amount of time on the hair for instance. And this is where just building up the tones and the big gradation of the tones comes in. In the areas that I don't want to focus, I just use my willow charcoal to loosely lay down a tone and this helps recede that area and pull the focus more towards the features.
So since we're almost at the end of the pose, I'm just going to keep drawing for the last few minutes. And if you're already done and you'd like to show off your work, feel free to use the photograph button here in the chat. We always love to see what you do. And otherwise, after the video, feel free to use the hashtag, hashtag RawUmberLive, if you'd like to show off your work and you're on Instagram. Alright, so that's the end of the pose. 
I hope that you feel like you've learned something about how to finish a portrait. Again, if you'd like to show off your artwork, feel free to post a picture here in the chat or alternatively use the hashtag, hashtag RawUmberLife. I hope you enjoyed the session and thank you for taking part. Don't forget to photograph your works, put them on Instagram and hashtag them with hashtag raw umber live. We run two sessions a week, a portrait drawing session every Sunday at 4 p.m. and figure drawing every Wednesday at 8 p.m. The last portrait session of every month is free. Thank you and goodbye.